Recently, we got our first look at what's coming in the Fall Luminar Neo update. It includes two new tools, restoration and light depth. I'm really excited about the second one. It's similar to the relight tool, but way better. Now it does everything I've always wanted a tool like this to do and more. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, you'll get an overview of the powerful new light depth tool and see it in action. So if you're ready, let's dive in. The first thing I'm going to show you is where to find the tool and how to use it. The only thing I've done on this image was remove the power lines, but I find that the man is too dark and the foreground is too bright. Previously, we had the relight tool at our disposal, but it didn't do what I wanted. Let me show you. With relight, you have two zones, near and far. So you can brighten the near and darken the far. Then you can adjust the depth or where the lighting falls. So if I want to make sure the man is being brightened and the background is being darkened, it works well. However, the foreground is still really bright. So then I would have to go in and apply a mask to make this work. It's just an additional step that I'd rather not have to do. I gave this feedback to Skylum, among other things, and I think they listened because now we have the light depth tool. Let's take a look. You'll find the light depth tool right above relight here. Similar to other tools, you just need to drag the amount slider up to activate it. It may take a moment to analyze your image. It's creating what's called a depth map of your image. It's trying to figure out what's closest to the camera or the foreground, what's medium distance away or middle ground, and what's in the background or farthest away. What it comes up with is represented here. I recommend taking the amount slider quite high. This intensifies the effect, so it's easier to see what you're doing with it. Then you can always dial it back later once you've adjusted all the settings. The first thing you have to adjust here is the placement of the light. You see a circle that's similar to a radial gradient or radial filter. By grabbing the center, you can move it back towards the background, lighting up the grass behind him, or forward lighting up the man and finally the foreground in front of him. Notice how smart the tool is. It's done a really good job of analyzing the depth in the image as I explained a moment ago. So let's place it so that he's highlighted. The next adjustment you have available is to widen or narrow the beam of light. I just want to light him so I'm going to make it narrower. The softness slider is a softer blend. You can see what it's doing here. Then you can choose to warm him up or cool him down by adding yellow or blue. That looks pretty good. Under the advanced tab at the bottom, you have the ability to adjust the brightness and the color tone of the objects near and far. So brightness near affects the foreground. So the problem that I had with relight is solved. You can also adjust the background or things that are far away. So we can darken it or lighten it. In this case, I think he stands out more when the background is darker. Let's add a little bit of coolness to the background and a little bit of warmth to the foreground. Now that I'm happy with the placement, I can just dial it back a little bit or mask if necessary. For example, I don't want this pole in over here to be lit. So I'm going to use object select and just subtract it from this pole. There we go. So now he's being lit and the pole is not. I could refine it even more if I want with a little bit of erasing, but there's way less masking necessary with this tool than there was with relight. So here we are before and after the light depth tool. Let's look at another example. This is a stock image that I downloaded from Unsplash. I'll put a link to it in the description area below if you'd like to do the same and follow along. I haven't made any adjustments to this image yet, and it's a little bit on the flat side. So I'd like to highlight the cabin. Let's drag the amount up in the light depth tool. Remember to take it 
quite high. And then let's adjust it so we can get the light on the cabin. I'm gonna narrow it a little bit and create something dramatic. We can add a little bit of warmth, soften it, and then of course, darken the foreground and the background. Likewise, I can make the trees in the background a bit cooler and the foreground a bit warmer. There's a before and after. Very dramatic, right? Not quite happy with the placement. That's better. The only masking I might do here is just to take it off of the left side a little bit. There are four things that stand out in an image. Light is one. So any areas of brightness will stand out. So when you're editing your images, that's why you want to highlight the subject and make sure that elements that you don't want to bring attention to are darker. So I'm going to do a very slight fade on this tool to the edge of the left side of the image, just so that it's not quite as bright over there. That's better. Once again, there's the before and after. This is a really dramatic transformation of an image that had pretty flat, dull lighting. Now there's sculpting light on the cabin and trees, and the viewer knows exactly where to look to find the subject. Before I show you another example, let me take a little side note and tell you about Luminar Neo, the complete course. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video though, because I'm going to have a bonus tip for you. If you're struggling to understand how to use all of the tools in Luminar Neo to make the best images possible, then Luminar Neo, the complete course, might be exactly what you need. You'll learn each tool step by step so it's not confusing, and your skills and knowledge will grow naturally so that you will have a great understanding of which tool to use to get the effect that you want. Included in the course are the raw files used to demonstrate in the videos, so you can follow along. There's also several bonuses, including skies, overlays, and a keyboard shortcut cheat sheet. For more information or to buy the course, click the link in the description area below. It's a complete Luminar education package. Let's do an example with a person. This is a fun image for fall, but I want her to be highlighted more and stand out from the background. So let's use light depth to do just that. Increase the amount, set the placement, narrow the beam a little bit. And I wanna get it on her face, but I don't wanna light, for example, her hands up too much or the leaves in the foreground in front of her. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting her and not the leaves. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to soften it, warm her up a tiny bit, and darken the background and the foreground. There's a before and after. Once again, the light depth tool has done a really nice job. Something else I want you to be aware of here is watch the histogram and turn on the clipping warnings. Notice that I've brightened her so much that her sweater is now clipping. So I can dial this back a little bit, or I can adjust it after the fact. I like what this tool is doing. So I'm just going to apply it and then go to Essentials, the Develop tool, and bring the highlights down to solve that problem. This is what I call the photo editing dance. Sometimes when you apply one tool, you have to compensate to fix some areas with another. It's all about finding the right balance. So let me ask you this. Can you see yourself using the new light depth tool? Will you be adding it to your list of favorites in Luminar Neo? I will. As a matter of fact, let me do that right now. If you've forgotten how to do that, just right click on any tool and choose add to favorites. Then you need to remember that it goes up here at the top under your favorites. So if you're ever missing any tools, they might be hiding in there. Okay, are you ready for the bonus tips? Keep in mind that this is just one tool in the Luminar Neo Arsenal, and there are several others that complement it. So if you want to add to this effect, let's take a look at some of the other tools that you can use. On this image of the girl, I've already applied a few additional tools. This is what I came up with. Pretty dramatic, right? When we look at the tools that I used, you can see I applied light depth first, then I used develop to solve the highlight problem. Next, portrait bokeh. Remember that you can also darken the background as well as blurring it 
with the Portra Boca tool. So that's really handy and it goes well with light depth. Next, I use Studio Light to enhance the lighting even more and add a little bit of a yellow glow onto her. And finally, an edge vignette to make it even more dramatic. Now it's like she's sitting in the spotlight. There's the full before and after. Can you see how you can use the tools to build on one another to get the effect that you want? Let's see how it works on the image of the cabin. There's the light depth tool, after which I applied develop to handle some of the highlights. Then I also used studio light on this image just to give the cabin a little bit of warmth. I masked it in so it only applies to the cabin. I used mask AI and selected architecture. Then I applied color harmony. This is another one of my favorite tools. Color contrast is great. Look what a good job it does enhancing the green and the yellow. Try not to take it overboard though, or you end up with overly saturated, unrealistic looking images. And lastly, I applied dramatic. Now you can see the full before and after. To finish this one, I would probably just crop in a tiny little bit just to get rid of these bright spots at the top. Et voila. I'm sure after watching this video, you can't wait to get your hands on the fall update. It's coming soon. They've told us sometime in November. So have patience. And until then, watch another video here on my YouTube channel. Take care and keep practicing your photo editing.